Hey guys, Pastor Tanner here. Study Bible tier list. I'm so excited for this video. Let me share with you how I came across this idea. I know that referencing your study Bibles in Logos Bible software is one of the best ways to get some quick bang for your buck in terms of your study. Study Bibles tend to condense information, so you can access it really quickly and get a good sense of whether or not you want to dig deeper into the passage. So I love referencing study Bibles as a first attempt once you're digging into a passage. But I have so many study Bibles at this point. I have over 30 of them in my Logos Bible software. And I started to ask myself, am I really referencing the ones that are best? I don't really know. And so I decided to dig in and do a little bit of research for myself and see how I would rank the study Bibles. This was going to help me make sure that I'm referencing the five best or the 10 best whenever I can in my studies, rather than trying to dig through and just reference the ones I'm most familiar with. But then as I started to think about it, I thought this might be a great video for many of our viewers out there who are not really sure about which study Bibles they should be getting. And so I decided I was going to make a tier list out of them and rank them. Now, I want to tell you about my process. How did I go about ranking them? Well, I did two things, okay? First, I went through and gathered my first impressions of each study Bible. This was not in-depth. It was very cursory. I opened all of my study Bibles, and I tried to just dig into each of them briefly, five minutes or so, just to get a feel for the study Bible. And then once I did that, I went ahead and put down my temporary tier, where I thought it would land in terms of the tier list. Then after that, I decided to take a little bit more of a scientific approach. Now, don't get me wrong. This is entirely subjective, okay? So I'm not pretending that I've done this in any sort of objective way. But what I decided to do is this. I studied five passages, okay? And I went through each of the study Bibles in each of these five passages, and I went through to see what it was actually offering me. And then I ranked each study Bible based upon that passage. Either it was my favorite study Bible for that passage or my least favorite. And I just ranked them in that order. I pulled out each study Bible and I asked myself, would I rather have this one or would I rather have that one? And whichever one was the victor, I went ahead and moved that one up. And then I constantly did that process until I had a list of my favorite study Bible in that passage from one to 35. Okay. Then I assigned each one a point value. So if you were in first place, you got 35 points. If you got last place, you got one point, okay? And then I summarized all of those point values across all five passages that I studied. I studied three passages out of the Old Testament, Genesis 12, Psalm 23, and Ezekiel 36. And then I studied two passages out of the New Testament, Romans 3 and James 2. And then I summed across every single one of those. And so you can already begin to see how my study Bible ranking system is going to work. If you are consistent, if this study Bible actually consistently has decent marks across five separate passages, it's naturally going to rank higher. However, if it scored really low in one passage or another, that could really tank its score because of the fact that it missed out on a potential 30 plus points for one given passage. That was brutal. My final scores resulted from the lowest possible score of five. That is if you scored the worst in every single passage or the highest possible score would be 175. That is, if you got a perfect score, you were the best study Bible in every single passage, okay? None of the study Bibles got the worst or the best score, but there were a lot that were really close, okay? So that's the method that I used. Hopefully that helps you as I kind of go through and I tell you some of my tier rankings. Couple more preliminary thoughts before we jump in. First, study Bibles function kind of like a single volume commentary does. They're really helpful for honing in on the major themes and messages within the text. If you have three to five good study Bibles, you can do so much research with just those study Bibles, and then you also know where to dig deeper in your Bible dictionaries or your exegetical commentaries, okay? The second thing I want you to know is that I have a bit of a Logos Bible software bias here. Now, all of these study Bibles, as far as I know, are available on the market, with the exception of the Faith Life Study Bible, in a print form, but I'm typically referencing these study Bibles in Logos Bible software. So there's just a bit of a biased perspective for me when it comes to that. If you're a print user, I think you'll still get tons of value out of this video, but I just want you to know I'm typically accessing these study Bibles in Logos Bible software. 
With that said, Logos has an advantage, and I want you to know this ahead of time. Some of these study Bibles are titled something based upon the translation that they're typically paired with in print. So, for example, there's the New King James Study Bible or the KJV Study Bible. Well, I want you to know in Logos, you can pair any of the study Bibles with whatever translation you want. All you have to do is link them up, and now you're utilizing the KJV Study Bible with your ESV translation. Really cool advantage. Now, I want to say two quick things before we get into the rankings themselves, okay? First, I'm a little bit biased towards the exegesis of the text itself. So when I started ranking those Bibles and I asked myself, would I rather have this one or that one? Oftentimes, I leaned in the direction that focused on exegeting the text. But not all study Bibles are created equal. In fact, there's a few that aren't trying to exegete the text. So sometimes they just rank a little bit lower for me because I find less general utility out of them, okay? The other quick note of think about in light of that fact is that some of these study Bibles will actually score pretty low in rankings, and yet I would recommend you consult them regularly. Yes, some of the D tier or even F tier study Bibles, according to my tier list, are actually really, really good to consult, and it's because they offer something very unique for the given passage. They're rarely going to be the only study Bible you want to consult, but if you have two or three of the really high A tier or S tier study study Bibles, you might actually want to include a D tier or even an F tier study Bible when you reference week to week, because these might actually cover things that you're missing in the other ones. So please don't take offense if I rank your favorite study Bible really low on the tier list. I tried to be as objective as I could. I tried not to consider my specific tradition or theological bent. Instead, I just tried to look at the information available to me, but this is the system I utilized. Let's go ahead and jump into the study Bibles. Now, the first study Bible I want to reference is the N. NIV Bible Speaks Today Study Bible. This one is actually relatively new to me. I didn't have this in my library until Logos 10 launched, and it was included as part of one of my base packages. I am so glad I have this study Bible. You can think of this study Bible as a more condensed version or abridged version of the Bible Speaks Today commentary series. But rather than getting all of these multi-volume commentaries that you have to dig through in detail, you're getting all of the best hits from those commentaries in a single study Bible with notes. I think this is really helpful, okay? Sometimes you don't have time to reference all of the commentaries in depth, and instead, you can go to the study Bible itself and see what the highlights are. This is really, really good. When I first referenced the study Bible, I thought this was going to be S tier because I just loved what it offered. A couple concise paragraphs on each pericope, and then some good questions to get your mind thinking along application-oriented lines or for a more devotional purpose. However, once I started to dig into it, I felt it was lacking just a little bit in a few areas, and this is because it is not comprehensive. If you dig into a specific chapter, they're often trying to summarize things, and so you might have no comments on the specific pericope that you're referencing, okay? And so that drug it down just a little bit for me. There were a few sections that I did not think were really up to snuff. For example, in Genesis 12, this study Bible for me ranked third. I really liked what it offered. But when it came to Romans 3, it dropped quite a bit in the rankings, more like 10th. And that's just because it wasn't as comprehensive as I would like. That said, this study Bible got 144 points for me out of 175, and that places it firmly in the A tier. I love referencing the study Bible. I love the questions. These can really prompt for some good discussion. The second study Bible I want to focus on is the MacArthur study Bible. This is an oldie but a goodie. This thing was around before the ESV study Bible came out. For a long time, it was considered to be one of the top study Bibles on the market because there was just no competition with this level of depth. Well, it's a little bit more dated at this point, and I started to dig in. It's got good specific verse-by-verse -verse treatment, and its theological tradition shines through. I saw that time and time again in those passages. So if you're more along the Reformed Baptist lines or the dispensational line, you're going to like this one a little bit more, but there's still good comments here. When I first referenced this, I thought it was going to get C tier from me, okay? I was looking through. I liked some of the comments that were there that were present, but overall, I just thought that there were better study Bibles on the market and that it wouldn't really really push past C tier for me, even though I'm a decent fan of MacArthur. However, once I went ahead and put together my point system, this scored 107 points out of 175. That places it firmly in the B tier, okay? 
This study Bible performs best in theologically heavy sections, just like this in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 is full of a lot of theological heaviness, and the MacArthur Study Bible performs well there. However, when it came to certain passages like Genesis 12, or even Psalm 23 to an extent, I just didn't like the notes as much, and they didn't feel like they were as devotional as I wanted them to be. And so that's what just knocked it down a little bit. But still, a really solid offering here in the MacArthur Study Bible. Again, 107 points. B tier for me. All right, my next study Bible has a little bit of nostalgia for me. I actually have this one in print. This is one of the first study Bibles I got when I became a Christian in college. It was actually gifted to me and it's held a place in my heart, okay? So I want you to know I might be a little bit biased here, but I was trying to be as objective as I could. And I didn't think this study Bible would hold up. I thought it was gonna be too dated at this point and I thought that it just really wouldn't be able to cut the mustard when it came to more recent study Bibles that have really pushed the standards up to another level. However, I was surprised at what I saw here. Now, the big problem with the KJV Study Bible is how uneven the treatment is, okay? And here's what I want to show you. Look at the treatment here in Romans 3, for example. It's fantastic. There's good notes. It actually references some of the Greek, and there are specific sections that actually talk about good theological areas, personal sin, justification, propitiation, really, really good treatment in Romans 3. And so this was pushing it up there for me. I thought this might make A tier, but then I got to passages like Ezekiel 36, and I just want you to see, look how small the treatment is here. Ezekiel 36 verses 1 to 38, one short paragraph, and a good chunk of that is just quoting the biblical text itself. I'm sorry, but this really tanked the performance of this study Bible. It's too uneven. Some passages are really great, and then other passages, you're just not getting the treatment you're looking for. So the KJV study Bible is still a good offering. 82 points for me. That's C tier, but it's just too uneven. You're going to need to supplement this with a more balanced one. All right, my next study Bible is beloved by many. This is the Schofield Reference Bible. Many grew up with this thing. This was something that was focused in the study Bible arena when there just was not much around at the time, not much competition. Now, I want you to know that I was a little more critical towards this one. When I started to look through, I was thinking, based on some of the notes, that this was going to get a D tier from me, okay? Now, the theology is very specific. It's very dispensational and it's unabashedly so. So when you read Genesis 12, it explicitly talks about dispensations versus covenants. It even says that this is exclusively Israelitish. Okay, that's the language. So you need to know what you're getting here. So I thought this was going to get D tier, but if you really liked dispensational theology, for example, it would just really bump it up for you because you're resonating so much with the notes. However, I was sorely disappointed. I'm sorry, guys. I wanted to score this study Bible higher, but it is so uneven yet again and in multiple places, okay? If I go, for example, here to Genesis 12, you can see its treatment is very brief and it's very focused on dispensational theology, but it gets even worse than that. Let me go to Psalm 23. There is no treatment of Psalm 23 at all. I had to score it bottom of the barrel here because it has no offering. You're getting nothing in one of the most beloved Psalms in the entirety of the scriptures. Ezekiel 36 wasn't much better. You go here and there's one short comment on verse one. I wanted to like the Schofield reference Bible more than I did, but it's just too uneven. And I'm sorry, once I started to rank it up, it just added up to 27 measly points. I got to give this one F tier. Again, I want you to know if this is one of your favorite reference Bibles, that's fantastic. I loved its treatment of Romans three and it scored very highly for me, but in in many other sections, it just didn't do it. All right, guys, Andrew's study Bible is next. This is a very interesting study Bible, okay? There are good notes here, generally speaking, though it's a bit brief, and then there are like scattered maps throughout the notes, okay? At my first glance, I thought this was gonna make C tier for me, but I was actually pleasantly surprised as I went through. I loved its treatment in Psalm 23. Look what it has to offer in Psalm 23. There is just a lot here. Look, there's a fantastic outline, great comments and discussion and I really appreciated what it brought to the table here. I think it scored fifth or sixth for me when it came to Psalm 23. So this bumped up 
Andrews in general across the board, it is pretty good in terms of its overall treatment. It ended up scoring 102 points for me, and this places it firmly in the B tier. Very nice surprise with the Andrews Study Bible. All right, guys, the Revival Study Bible is next. I was completely unaware of the Study Bible before I did this, and that's part of why I did the study. The Revival Study Bible is very unique because it offers a chain reference system similar to Thompson Chain, okay? But they call it the Revival Chain Reference System. Instead of tying to a bunch of theological topics, they tie specifically to revival-related theological topics, and then they begin to link the Bible together in that fashion. Now, there were some areas in which the Revival Study Bible performed really well. When I first referenced it and just glanced, I thought this was going to make a good C tier for me. For example, check out what it offers here at Ezekiel 36. I really appreciated this. Good discussions, good chain reference system. I really like the topics that are being brought up, and you can link them to other passages. So it scored pretty high here. But I was so frustrated with Romans 3, for example. This is one of the most important sections of Scripture, and all they have is a simple little poem put out by Count Zinzendorf. I'm sorry, but this really dragged the study Bible down. So on average, it just didn't get as high as many of the other ones. This ended up scoring 58 points for me. It puts it in D tier, but this is one of those ones where if you already have the rest of the pericope shored up with other study Bibles, this is a really good one to reference for revival specific themes. Yes, it got D tier for me, but I want you to know I personally am going to be referencing this one regularly alongside others. All right, guys, let's move on to the Nelson study Bible next. Now, this is very similar to another study Bible called the New King James Version study Bible. I want to show them both to you at the same time because they have almost the exact same notes. However, there are some subtle differences in the commentaries and articles that are offered within, okay? But these two study Bibles are very, very similar when it comes to the notes. Now, this one was a sleeper for me, guys. When I first referenced the Nelson Study Bible, I thought it was going to be C tier, okay? The notes looked pretty good, but overall, nothing was really standing out to me. But once I dug into it, chapter after chapter after chapter, I was so impressed with the notes of the Nelson Study Bible and the New King James Version Study Bible as well. It says right here, this is the most comprehensive study Bible available. And I thought, no way. But as I dug through, I can understand why they made that claim. These are really, really good notes. And I'm glad that it's in both of them. Guys, after I did my analysis, Nelson Study Bible got 145 points firmly in the A tier, and I gave the New King James Version Study Bible 151 points just because some of its articles in some of the chapters were better. That's a high A tier for me, guys. This is one you might not be referencing, and you need to add it to your stable quickly, okay? Nelson or New King James Version Study Bible is really strong, and it can compete with some of the highest tier study Bibles out there. All right, guys, up next is the Catholic Study Bible, second edition, the NABRA, okay? And and I first referenced this, and I wasn't sure how it was going to score. Like I said, I'm not Catholic, but I tried to be as balanced as I could and just give the best score based upon the density of the notes that were there and what I thought they offered to the typical user. Now, when I first referenced this one, I just thought it was a little bit light on some of its notes, okay? I thought it could be more in-depth, and so when I first looked at it, I thought it was going to get D tier. As I dug in, guys, it didn't get much better for me than that. You can see one small note here on Romans chapter 3. That's a pretty important section. You've also got James chapter 2. This is pretty important as well, and you're only getting a handful of paragraphs here, okay? So this is something I was hoping for more from, but in reality, I just wasn't finding that it was actually giving me a lot of value for the verses referenced. And so after it was all said and done, guys, this did end up in D tier for me, ended up with 51 points, and I just wished it could perform a little bit better. All right, guys, my next study Bible is one that I wanted to get so much when I was in college. I got saved in college, and one of the ways I got saved was through Living Waters Ministries and watching some of their evangelism videos on YouTube. And they put out the Evidence Bible and it was all about apologetics, evangelism. I was so eager to get the Evidence Bible when I was in college. And I wasn't able to get it for some time because it was a little bit more expensive. And so I had to go with my gift instead of getting the Evidence Study Bible. Well, when I first referenced this 
after having stepped away from it for years and years and years, I looked at it and I thought, this is going to make D tier for me, okay? It's just really scant in its treatment in many, many areas. It's extremely light. There are entire chapters within the study Bible that have no comment. Now, don't get me wrong. It's got some great woodcut pictures, okay? And it does have some interesting articles and discussions, some interesting quotes, but I just didn't think that it would stand up. And sure enough, guys, I was right, unfortunately. Let me go to Genesis 12. Look at this. You have a single comment on Genesis 12. Again, neat pictures, but that's not what I'm looking for here, and I'm just not getting the treatment I'm looking for. So at the end of the day, the Evidence Study Bible got 29 points for me, guys. That puts it firmly in the F tier. It's not what I wanted for it, but it is what it is. All right, guys, my next study Bible on the docket is the Spurgeon Study Bible. I was very excited for this one when it was put out because I love Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, right? And I was really, really excited for this. I perused it initially, and I thought, you know what? This is going to be collected comments from Spurgeon, and it's going to get a C tier for me, okay? They're just placed throughout the Bible, and I'm going to enjoy what it has to offer. But I started to dig in, guys, and I have to say it. This was my biggest disappointment of all of the study Bibles. It is very sparse in many areas. It has isolated illustrations, and it just was not what I was hoping it would be when it came to a good study Bible. Look at its treatment of Genesis 12. I just thought it could do so much better here. You've got a couple of brief comments, not a lot going on, and then it moves on. Or Ezekiel 36 is similar. You know, I would think that Ezekiel 36 would give a great opportunity for a lot of awesome comments from Spurgeon, but we just get a couple of paragraphs here. Don't get me wrong, it's longer, but it's just not giving me the details that I need for a really good study Bible. So guys, this was far from C tier for me. Once I mapped it out, this scored only 32 points. That puts it firmly in the F tier for me. Now, again, I want you to know, you might reference this as long as you have your bases covered in other areas, but this is definitely going to be the study Bible that you reference fourth, fifth, sixth, just for those good quotes from Spurgeon. All right, guys, the next three study Bibles are all quite similar to each other. This is the CSB Apologetic Study Bible, also the CSB Apologetic Study Bible for students, and then finally, the apologetic study Bible that was put out before the CSB translation came out, okay? These are all very, very similar in their offerings, so I'm going to treat them largely together. Now, when I first referenced the CSB apologetic study Bible, I thought this is the most recent version, so it's going to be the most robust, and I was glancing through it, and I thought, man, this is going to really perform well. I like the articles, I like the comments, and it's a lot more relevant to our day and age when people are asking tough questions about the Bible. So I assumed that it was going to make B tier for me. I just liked it at first glance. For the Apologetic Study Bible for students, I put this at C tier for my anticipated tier just because it seemed like its articles were a little bit shorter and they were aimed at a little bit more of a common audience. But still, I thought this one would do really well at C tier. Finally, guys, I was looking at the Apologetic Study Bible and at first glance, I thought this was going to be an older one and so it was going to be less robust than the others. But once I started to dig in, guys, I found in passage after passage, passage, the original apologetic study Bible had more thorough notes, better commentary, and better articles and discussion. So as I started to reference it, I thought this one would be a tier for me. Well, guys, I have to say that once I started to compare all of them to each other, I was a little bit disappointed. The CSB Apologetic Study Bible in general is too truncated from the original Apologetic Study Bible. I think they took too much out and it really hurt the Bible. Not only that, but I was also referencing them quite near each other. And oftentimes they would be grouped when I ranked them, okay? So I'd often have all three of these study Bibles right next to each other in my rankings and they weren't often scoring very high. For me, guys, the CSB Apologetic Study Bible scored 45 points overall. This puts it in the D tier. I wanted it to do better. And I think honestly, in isolation, if I wasn't comparing it to the other two, it probably would have done better. But because these other two are out there, it just didn't score that high for me. Again, it's very niche, however, okay? So this might be one that if you are referencing multiple study Bibles, this is a great one for your fifth, your sixth study Bible to reference. The Apologetic Study Bible for students, guys, scored typically lower for me than the CSB did. And this was just because it was an even more simplified version. It ended up with 29 points, guys. That's F tier for me. And 
if it was an isolation, I like what it has to offer, but compared against the other two, it was just weaker overall. Finally, guys, the original Apologetic Study Bible did score the best for me, but it was nowhere near A tier. This ended up with 67 points. There were some sections in which it was absolutely standout. Let me show you, for example, Genesis 12. I loved the offering here in Genesis 12. There were so many good comments. There's the twisted scripture section. It's great to reference, but it's uneven. And sometimes these articles aren't helpful and it's not what you're looking for in terms of the passage. So overall, it made 67 points. That places it firmly in the C tier for me. All right, guys, next is the Faith Life Study Bible. And I was really interested to dig into this one because this is one that Faith Life offers as like a free offering. And I figured it's just gonna be one of those things that is kind of put together in a haphazard fashion, maybe a bit more of a summary and not gonna be as in-depth as I'm looking for. But I started to reference it just at first glance and the Faith Life Study Bible, I have to say, has some distinct advantages in Logos Bible software. You can see there are direct references to the fact book. There are also these areas in which you can expand it and it will give you references to other books in your library. So if you have a robust library, it's gonna help you a lot. And I didn't wanna count that against it, guys. Yeah, it has an advantage being native to Logos Bible software, but that should count in its favor. And the real question is, are the notes holding up with some of the highest level study Bibles out there? I have to say, guys, that's absolutely the case. The Faith Life Study Bible has great verse level comments. It has embedded charts, diagrams, pictures, links to fact book entries. This is S tier, hands down. It often scored first place in each of the chapters I was referencing. Sometimes it was beat out by some other study Bibles that haven't come up yet, but overall, this is a fantastic offering, guys. It scored near perfect for me. This was 173 out of 175 points, S tier for sure. Okay, let's move on now to another study Bible that I wasn't aware of before. This is the Evangelical Heritage Version study Bible. I wasn't aware of this one before, and when I first glanced at it, I didn't think it would perform that well. I thought it would make D tier because some of the verse level comments are just the briefest of comments. Let me show you, for example, in Genesis 12, you can see there's just basic treatment with some of the verses, not a lot going on. However, there were some other sections where it performed a bit better. James 2, for example, I really liked its offerings and some of the comments that were available here. There were a lot for each of the individual verses, and it gave you a lot more to dig into. Overall, though, guys, I wasn't wrong. It ended up making 58 points over all five of the chapters that were referenced, and that put it firmly in the D tier. All right, guys, next is the Companion Bible. I think this is my oldest study Bible in the stable, okay? Look, you can see here, originally published in six parts from 1909 to 1922. It was a classic study Bible, all right, and I just thought this one would not perform. I was thinking D tier for this thing as I went ahead and dug into it. But there were some sections here where I was absolutely blown away by its treatment. Look at Ezekiel 36. These are great outlines that are available. You can see the structure of the text. Great notes. Now, these are more of a grammatical level or original language level, but this is really, really good treatment, especially from such an old study Bible. However, it did suffer from some unevenness at this point. If I go to Genesis 12, you can see it's not quite as in-depth and it's not as quite detailed without outlines and things like that, that brought it down a little bit. Overall though, guys, I was pretty impressed with the Companion Study Bible. It has offerings that you're not going to find in any other study Bible. And so after it was all said and done, it made 77 points. That puts it firmly in C tier. Don't hesitate to reference this one your fourth or fifth time. All right, guys, next for me is the Fire Bible. This is one that users have been asking for for years. Can we please get the Fire Bible in Logos Bible software? Well, it's here and I hadn't referenced it before. Does it really hold up? Yes, it does. Look at its treatment of James 2. I really scored it high here. It had some fantastic treatment here in James 2. Really good verse level discussions, really good theological ideas. And I was very impressed with the Fire Bible. On first reference, I thought it would make B tier and there are some sections where it definitely pushes up into the A tier, but overall it is a bit uneven at times. And so after it was all said and done, it ended up with 118 points for me and that did put it in B tier, though it's a very high B tier, almost makes it to A. All right, guys, next is the CSB study Bible, okay? When this came out, I thought it could be a rival to some of the best study Bibles on the market. However, once I started to dig in, I initially looked at Genesis 12 and it just wasn't 
wasn't fitting the bill for top tier study Bibles. Don't get me wrong. It had good notes. It has some good maps and some good treatment. And it has some original language study as well. But there were just a few things that were holding it back from being top tier in my eyes. So I think in Genesis 12, it was like my eighth study Bible. Okay. Still really good. Eight out of 35, but that was bringing it down a little bit. However, guys, then I went to Psalm 23 and it scored first place for me in Psalm 23. Fantastic treatment, original language study, devotional comments and thoughts, good pictures, and it really started to perform at this point and it never looked back. Yes, guys, the CSB study Bible competes with some of the top study Bibles on the market. At the end of the day, it scored 163 points for me out of 175. That's S tier for sure. Don't pass this one up. All right, guys, the next study Bible for me is the CSB Disciple Study Bible. It's put out also by Holman Bible Publishers. And here's what I thought, guys. I thought this is just going to be a stripped down version of the CSB Study Bible. Boy, was I wrong. It's completely different in its emphasis. The way the CSB Study Bible works is it takes the particular pericope and it breaks it down in more of a systematic theology or doctrinal emphasis. So you have these doctrinal categories and it tries to point out where they pop up in each of the verses. I think the idea is is you'll dig into each of these categories and that's going to help you to become a better disciple because you're going to be able to systematize the faith a little bit more. Now I started to reference it and I thought, man, this is going to make B tier for me. Okay. Really cool treatment. And it's very different in its offering. You're not getting this from many other study Bibles. And I was pretty right in my initial assessment after it was all said and done. And we added up all the points. It was at 92 points. That places it very high C tier. It's a good reference. And again, it's very unique. So definitely put this in your stable in that fourth, fifth, six slot. Now, the next study Bible is similar in its emphasis. This is the ESV Systematic Theology Study Bible, and it makes no bones about trying to be a verse-level Bible commentary. Instead, it says, we are treating the Bible in broad systematic theological categories, and we're going to focus on that. When I first looked at it, guys, I thought this would make B tier for me. I really like its treatment on specific theological ideas, especially in certain sections. However, guys, it really suffers from that unevenness that I've been indicating. Look with me at Psalm 23. No treatment of Psalm 23. I mean, that's brutal. This is a very important passage. Now, I get it. They're saying there's no systematic theological idea here, but the fact of the matter is such an uneven treatment is just going to score you really low in my system. So overall, guys, the Systematic Theology Study Bible ended up with 73 points for me. That's C tier. Don't get me wrong. In those passages where there was a topic that was related, it performed really well, but it's just too uneven. All right, guys, the next one is another Another Catholic study Bible. This is the Ignatius Catholic study Bible. Okay. And I was first looking at this and I thought, man, this thing could make B tier. It is really good in some of its notes and comments. And then I only realized this once I started looking through guys, that unevenness plagues it. Okay. There are specific sections where it does not have a treatment at all. Now this is primarily in the old Testament. I think all of the new Testament is treated, but in the old Testament, there's only like five or six books in this series. And it's a real shame because if you go to some of these treatments, it's really good. Look at its treatment of Romans 3. Lots of notes here. Lots of good comments. Its treatment also of Genesis 12 is really good. I liked what it had to offer here. Discussions of the particular characters involved. Really good maps. And there are good verse level comments. But guys, there is no Psalms at all. No Ezekiel at all. And so in my rubric, it really ranked it down. So this one's really tough for me, guys, because it's incomplete. I'm I'm going to be honest, guys, if it was finished, I think it could make a tier. Seriously, it scored really well when it had a treatment, but I had to give it two big fat zeros on Psalm 23 and on Ezekiel 36. And so that dragged its score way down as it is, guys. It's still got 75 points for me. That places it firmly in the C tier. And that was with taking two zeros. Wow. Really good treatment here, especially if you're in this tradition. All right. Next, guys, is the Tony Evans study Bible. I actually have a few members of my congregation who love Tony Evans and listen to him regularly. I didn't listen to him as much until they told me about him. And then I started listening. I love his illustrations. He's a very dynamic preacher. I like his stuff a lot. So once I saw that he had a study Bible coming out, I was very, very interested. 
At first glance, I thought this would make C tier, okay? Don't get me wrong, there's not a lot of in-depth comments, but what it does have is interesting and it's gonna help you on that preaching front. But unfortunately, guys, for me, it just didn't perform in section after section. You can see a pretty scant treatment here of Psalm 23, and I was just hoping for more out of it. So it ended up scoring a little bit lower for me than I expected. This ended up with 63 points, still not bad, but that's a high D tier from me, and I was just looking for a little bit more. Next, guys, this is a very unique study Bible. When I saw this thing come out, I was super interested. This is the ESV Literary Study Bible. What this thing does is it actually takes certain sections of scripture and tries to break it down into literary themes like hero's journey, different characters, things like that. Very intriguing. Now, its treatment is a little bit on a higher level. You're not getting verse level commentary here so much as the broader themes and the literary ideas. At first glance, I thought this would make C tier for me, okay? Really intriguing offering, and I thought I would really like the comments that I brought to the table. However, the problem is, guys, just over and over and over again, I didn't find the comments as helpful as I thought they would be, and it consistently scored low. 48 points overall after all five chapters. This puts it in the D tier. Again, however, this is a unique offering, okay? So if you're going to reference it a little bit later after you've already covered your bases with something like the CSB, this is a really cool one to look into. All right, guys, next we have the NIV Grace and Truth Study Bible. This is one that I believe is edited by Al Mohler. I was very excited when I heard that it was announced. And when it was announced, guys, I want you to know, I was thinking, man, could this be one that actually competes with some of the highest S tier study Bibles? When I started digging into it, guys, I saw there was some good verse level treatment, but it was lacking in a few of the other areas like maps, graphics, articles, etc. And so, you know what? I thought it's going to take C tier. That's what I thought it would be. It would merely be good, but it just doesn't push up to the highest levels. But I got to let you guys know the Grace and Truth Study Bible might get my award for most consistent. I am not kidding, guys. Over and over and over again, it consistently delivers these paragraph level comments for section after section after section. It ended up with a total of 105 points for me, and that places it firmly in the B tier. But if I could give it this award, this might be the best B tier study Bible there is. It's not trying to be anything else. It's not trying to ascend to these massive heights. Instead, it's going to consistently give you good verse level treatment, and I really like what it brings to the table. All right, guys, the next one is an oldie but a goodie. This is the Reformation Study Bible put out by Ligonier Ministries and R.C. Sproul's group. And I've got both versions here, the 2015 update and the original. And I want you to know, I've got the original right here. See, this is one I actually picked up while I was in college, and I loved it back then, but does it hold up today? Well, guys, on first reference, I was thinking this is going to be A tier for me, okay? It's got good verse level comments like I remembered, good discussions, and it tries to call out all of those key theological ideas that you're looking for, of course, from that reform perspective. And once I did the math on it, guys, it scored consistently solid. It got 101 points for me. That puts it in the B tier, which is pretty good. Now, I want you to know also that I didn't find much difference between the two versions. Some of the notes are slightly expanded and there's some changes to the articles and maps but if you only have the original i don't know that you need to spend any extra in order to upgrade all right, guys, the next one is one that I was eagerly looking forward to when I first saw it. This is the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible. This is edited by D.A. Carson. I'm a big D.A. Carson fanboy. I've loved his stuff for a long time. I love biblical theology. I got to take a class with him. I'm so excited about this study Bible. And so I was looking at it with my rose-colored glasses. I was like, man, this is going to be A tier for me. It's got good notes, and it's got that biblical theological theme. Great emphasis. And I want you to know, guys, as I was digging in, I was also surprised to see that it has some good, unique graphics some good maps, good pictures, etc. So I thought for sure this one would have really high marks for me. Now, overall, I wasn't wrong, but it falls slightly short of best of class, okay? It ended up with 112 points for me, which is pretty good, but that puts it firmly in the B tier, okay? So it's not ascending to the highest levels of the study Bibles, but this is still a nice one to reference. All right, guys, the next one is a very unique study Bible. This is the Word in Life study Bible. It's an oldie, but don't count it out, okay? When I first started glancing at this thing, I was blown away as I was looking at Genesis 12. Some of the treatment is really unique. You've got character studies and you've got maps. You've got specific ideas. I don't know. I was very, very excited for it. And so I thought it was going to make A tier. Honestly, that's what I thought. Just looking through all this information. But you could tell that other shoe was going to drop. Look with me at Romans 3. Just a small article here. No other real treatment of Romans 3. Really important passage. And so I had to mark it down in this area. Because of this, guys, it only got 83 points for me. That's C tier. But I want you to know this is a very special offering. There is no other study Bible that I could tell that is like the Word in Life study Bible. It's not trying to make exegetical comments. It's trying to be something completely different. And so this is a great study Bible to reference after you've referenced one of the 
the best in class ones already. I'm talking your third or fourth study Bible to reference because it's going to bring something completely unique to the table. This study Bible for me is actually an affirmation of why I did this entire series because I never referenced a study Bible before and you better believe I'm going to be referencing it now. All right, guys, this next one is the Reformation Heritage KJV Study Bible. Don't let the name fool you, okay? You can use it with any translation in Logos. And this one's put out by Joel Beakey, okay? Very excited when this one first came out. Does it hold up? Now, glancing at it, guys, I thought it was going to make B tier, okay? Many of its comments are not as in-depth as I would like them to be, and I thought that would drag it down. But this study Bible has one feature that consistently caused it to score several places higher than it normally would in my eyes. This is at the end of every single chapter. There are questions at the end called thoughts for personal and family worship. I love this section. In your preaching and teaching, go ahead and incorporate some of these questions in your application. Fantastic. Not only that, if you're studying by yourself, these are great for a devotional emphasis so that you can get your heart right before the Lord. I'm telling you guys, consistently, the comments brought it down to a certain level, and then these questions at the end always bumped it up by five ranks or more. Overall, guys, for me, 128 points, A tier for sure. This should be one you're referencing high on your list. Next, guys, this is the ESV Global Study Bible, a more generalized study Bible in reference. There's some scattered Bible facts, good verse level comments, and some more in-depth and then some more brief, okay? So it's a little bit scattered in that sense. There are also charts, maps, personality profiles, and just very interesting facts that it's kind of putting throughout. On first reference, guys, I thought this would make C tier, and I wasn't wrong. After all was said, and done it got c tier for me 89 points overall that's not bad consistently scored in the c tier range and it's just a good general one to reference next guys another catholic study bible this is the little rock catholic study bible okay there are thoughtful prayer starters in them good charts and good character highlights as well very interesting study bible here on first reference i thought this would make c tier okay that was just kind of my gut level decision and as i was digging through i really liked what it brought out in many of these areas and so overall it did score c tier 77 points, not bad. And this is a good study Bible to shore up maybe those places where the Ignatius study Bible, for example, just aren't getting it done. Okay, guys, the next one is a very unique study Bible. This is the Ancient Faith Study Bible, okay? And what this is for me, this is like the ancient Christian commentary on the scriptures, light, okay? They've taken all of those comments from the early church fathers, and they've really narrowed them down to the most essential ones, the most important ones, and they put them right there in the text for you. So at first reference, guys, I thought this was going to make B tier for me. Very very, very cool. I love referencing the early church fathers, and here's a perfect way to do it in a streamlined fashion. And in this sense, guys, it's actually very similar to the Bible Speaks Today study Bible that I referenced at the beginning, because it's taking a commentary series and it's putting it down in a more truncated form. That truncation can actually be helpful because the whole reason you're going to a study Bible is you don't necessarily have the time to dig deeper unless you know that's what you want to dig into. Now, overall, guys, this scored 93 points for me. That's a high C tier or a low B tier for me, just on the cusp, okay? And I I will say this scores higher for me if you don't already have the Catene Aurea or the Ancient Christian Text series, okay? If you have those, this doesn't score as high for me, but it's still really nice to have. All right, guys, next is the NIV Cultural Background Study Bible. This is kind of a unique offering because it's focusing on that historic context that you may not really know, and that's really helpful for when you're doing your study. Now, I will say, guys, there's some reusing of some charts and things like that from the Biblical Theology Study Bible. Or is it that the Biblical Theology Study Bible is reusing these ones? I don't know. Anyway, you're going to get a little bit of overlap there. But overall, I was glancing at this and I thought, man, this is going to be A tier for sure. Now, it didn't get A tier for me, and that's because of some of the unevenness. Let me show you Ezekiel 36. I was really disappointed with this offering. Two short paragraphs. But again, it's because it's focusing on cultural themes. And if there aren't a lot of cultural themes there, there's not much for it to emphasize. But it's because of chapters like this that it got dragged down a little bit, yet it still scored 115 points for me, okay? It's a high B tier. And if you're okay with the unevenness sometimes its comments are best of class all right guys moving on now to brian chapel this is the gospel transformation study bible this is one that is in the esv translation in print and i was excited for it because brian chapel is the editor on this one if you guys don't know my tradition has brian chapel as being the primary preaching and teaching pastor i studied his book religiously in order to become a pastor and a preacher and so i was excited for the study bible overall guys i thought it would get c tier it's briefer than some of the top tier study Bibles, but it still has good comments on the majority of the verses. And I wasn't wrong, guys. Its final points were 71 points. That puts it firmly in the C tier. A good one to reference, but there are just ones that are going to give you more bang for your buck. 
Finally, guys, the original big fat study Bible that said we are going to give you everything inside of the study Bible. You're never going to have to reference another book, okay? When this thing came out, people were clamoring for the ESV study Bible. But it's been like a decade since this thing came out, if not more. Does it still hold up? When I was referencing the notes, guys, the charts, it's as good as I remember. And I thought, man, maybe this will make A tier, maybe S tier. I'm just not sure if it will contend with some of the top tier study Bibles. But it still does, guys. When I went to Genesis, 12 it got first place for me such a good treatment of genesis 12 i mean look how in-depth the comments are it's got great maps it's got good charts i love the esv study bible it still holds up to this day it got 167 points for me that's firmly in the s tier Whew. Okay, guys, here we are at the end. I just want to make a couple of comments before I let you go. A final couple of awards that I want to give out to some of these study Bibles because I wasn't seeing some of these things coming. First, guys, consistency matters. This is so important, especially if you're only going to reference one or two study Bibles. NIV Grace and Truth is a perfect case in point. It was just so consistent across the board. That's really important. Second, guys, I want to point out the most similar study Bibles. I was surprised to see this, but the ESV Global Study Bible and the NIV Biblical Theology Study Bible were very similar in those regards. That was surprising to me as I was referencing them back and forth, but it was interesting to note. What are the best sleeper study Bibles? Well, I have to give two awards here. First is that Word and Life Study Bible. I did not see that one coming. I love its offerings. Very unique. And not only that, guys, but the Revival Study Bible, okay? I know it didn't score that high in terms of tier, but that was due to the unevenness, and I really like the treatment of the Revival Study Bible because it gives you those specific revival topics to dig into. Which study Bible was I most biased for that didn't really perform? Had to be the Spurgeon study Bible, guys. I was ready for that to be fantastic and it just consistently scored very, very low. Also, guys, finally, what were my biggest upsets? Well, it's got to be the Nelson and the New King James Version study Bible. I did not see these ones coming. They scored very high. I did not think they were anywhere near best of class and they start to edge up there. Finally, guys, what would I recommend to you Logos users who have multiple study Bibles? How should should you utilize these resources in your study? Well, recognize, guys, that study Bibles represent some of the best resources that you can reference because they are so summarized. This is really, really helpful. You don't always have time to dig into five in-depth exegetical commentaries, but you do have time to reference five study Bibles. Use that to start your research, and then a little bit later, you can dig further in. So here's the study Bible reference setup that I would use. First, guys, you want to reference an S-tier study Bible. This is going to be your ESV, your CSB, your Faith Life Study Bible. These are going to give you that comprehensive treatment so that you know you're not missing anything initially. And don't hesitate to reference multiple of them. If you reference all three of these, you're not going to miss a thing. Next, guys, to follow up, I would utilize one of these high-tier study Bibles that's a little different in emphasis. I'm talking the Bible Speaks Today or the NIV Cultural Background Study Bible. Both of these are really going to shore up some more of your studies in a way that these specific treatments don't. Third, guys, I want a very practical study Bible in your reference. We're looking at things like the Revival Study Bible or, like I said, the Reformation Heritage Study Bible with those awesome questions at the end of every chapter. The fourth section should be very unique study Bibles that you like. This is like the Apologetic Study Bible or the Systematic Theology Study Bible, perhaps the Literary Study Bible. Just include these if you want this extra reference. Finally, guys, I truly mean this. I think all setups can benefit from the Word in Life Study Bible. That study Bible is entirely unique and there's no other study Bible that does what it does. Okay guys, I hope that video was helpful to you a little bit longer than our typical offerings. If you want to see more videos of this length or this level of depth, please let me know in the comments below. I appreciate all your love and support here on the Pastor Tanner YouTube channel. Hope to see you again real soon. Take care. God bless. Bye.